Oh, well, the whole defense uh, received championship honors here this weekend uh, just because of how we played on defense. It's a, a real testament to uh, the way the guys have bought into what we're trying to do and the silver bullet uh, philosophy. Uh, I think our overall defensively, um, all 11 guys and even some of the backups are playing at a high level. It's hard to point out any individual, any uh, p specific uh, group. I just think all of us together are playing well. Chris, would you guys spend any time looking at the backup quarterback or do you just expect that it'll be Cook out there and nothing, nothing would change? Oh, Cook will play. I mean, uh, he's a competitor. Uh, he'll play. Uh, they have had several uh, snaps of a backup quarterback in there. They've played a lot with two quarterbacks out on the field. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they got some similarities, but they have differences, and we'll be ready with whoever's out there. When Cook's out there, what, what makes him special, in your opinion? As Urban Meyer said, he's a winner on top of everything else. Uh, but what just sets him apart a little bit? Uh, well, he's got a very strong arm. He can make all the throws. He's athletic enough to avoid pressure also. Uh, understands our system, understands defenses, gets them in and out of plays, reads coverage as well. I mean, you name it, uh, what you want in your quarterback, you pretty much see that in him. Mm -hmm. Chris, you've been associated with a lot of defenses. Is is this defensive front you've got, Urban Meyer was referring to them, you know, being quite disruptive. I mean, he thinks it's playing as well as maybe any front in the country. What? Do you see that too, and what just stands out about your defensive front right now? Oh, you, you see the front getting better every week as we move forward through the season. Uh, you see a front that's developing more and more depth also that's very critical to our success as we co go down the stretch here. But um, they are disruptive. They are making plays both in the run game and in the pass game. And it's exciting to see it makes everybody else's job easier. It makes the linebacker fits easier because there's cleaner pictures. Um, and then it, it obviously helps in the secondary and the pass defense because we're getting to the quarterback and putting pressure on the quarterback. That's what I was going to follow with. Raekwon, I mean, is he – Compared to this time a year ago, how far along has he come? I mean, just from a play recognition standpoint, fitting the gaps, et cetera. Uh, it's not even close. I mean, he, he was still a freshman last year. He was splitting time with Curtis Grant. He's gotten all the reps here this year. A uh, completely different player, uh, much more confident player, a faster player, uh, understands our defense a lot more, uh, getting to the ball a lot quicker. Uh, so uh, to compare him to last year, I mean, it's not even the same kid. Chris, does it allow you to game plan any differently with the defense? when you can expect that your defensive line is going to be it, uh, it helps. <laughs> I think every defensive coach out there would, uh, if you're going to build your defense, you would want to start up front and build it from the inside out with the defensive line being first. And, you know, fortunately here in my two years here, we've had a pretty disrupted def defensive line. And uh, that has been continuing here as we go through the season. It's, it's getting better. But, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, it makes everything a little bit easier if you know that you can hold the point and you can get after the quarterback. How big a turning point was winning last year there? No, uh, I mean, it was that was a. I mean, that was a big game. This will be a big game. That was a big game that was on the road. Uh, I think there were were a lot of players in this program that wanted a. They might not say it, but wanted a little bit of a revenge from the Big Ten championship game a year ago. So there was a little added incentive. But um, right now, at this point in in the season, every game's a big game. It doesn't matter who's lined up across the other side of the field. Uh, these guys are a good team. Uh, we were highly motivated. We got a lot of things uh, uh, to be. Uh, um, excited about going out and playing, and, and at the end of the day, it's about us going out and just showing that we're getting better from week to week. Is there always a danger in a big game of overthinking it? Uh, absolutely. Uh, too many, too many... Well, the, th the thing I think that's really cool here is when you go to Ohio State, you play in a lot of big games. Uh, everybody's going to give you uh, their best shot. And I think that the, the thing that we have, we have a champion, in my opinion, we have a championship routine that we go through each week. Uh, our preparation from our meetings to our walkthroughs to our practice to our film review. Uh, our kids buy into what we're doing and how we do our business and our process to get to, to Saturday. So that's not going to change just because we're playing uh, Michigan State this week. Um, it is what it is. Our process. No, our process uh, allows us to have success every Saturday, and our kids believe in that. Our coaches believe in that. Chris, specifically with Joey, what does it do when you have a player commanding triple teams the way that he seems to? Uh, well, does somebody else better be free? You know, uh, whether it be in the run game or in, in the uh, uh, a pass rush, uh, when he's getting three guys on him, you got three one on ones with other guys, so somebody else better get free. Has it? I mean, it looks kind of funny on film to see three guys surrounding just one guy. Have you seen a lot of that throughout your coaching? No, career? no, I can't say that I've been fortunate enough to coach a player that, that, that's uh, been like Joe. I think the other one was J.J. Watt when we were at Wisconsin. He re he uh, received a lot of that same. Uh, uh, attention that JJ or that uh, Joey does, so um, that's the only other player I've been around that has that kind of effect on an offense. Is he, you know, he hates being compared to JJ, or at least he doesn't like it. Let's put that. I'm not saying hate, but does he, in some respects, remind you of JJ Watt just from the disruption standpoint, from the attention 
he gets. Yeah, the, absolutely. There are a lot of Instead similarities. Of deserving, well, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of. I mean, JJ is obviously a great player, and he's proven it at the next level. Yeah. Joey's going to, in my opinion, going to do the same. I mean, you see the the path that JJ's been, or uh, uh, excuse me, Joey's been on here in the last uh, a year and a half, and the improvement that he's made just throughout this season, it's been tremendous, and he's very disruptive. Uh, they're both different players, but they they have some similar characteristics, and they both garner a lot of attention from the uh, opponent. And uh, I was going to ask you, uh, it, it just seems like every time Michigan State kind of gets in a fix offensively, I'm not saying every time I've watched every game, but Burbridge, Burbridge, uh, their wide receiver Aaron Burbridge appears to be the receiver of choice and stuff, and that's what you get him. What, what stands out when you watch him on video? Well, I think uh, their offense is like most good offenses. Uh, if they're in a funk, they rely on one of their best players to make a play. Yeah. And um, they're no different than what we are. If our offense is in a funk, uh, you, you know, somebody's waiting for Zeke Elliott to make a play, Mike Thomas to make a play, somebody's going to make a play, Braxton Miller's going to make a play. It's no different for Michigan State. They have good players on the offense, and if it may not be going the way uh, they scripted it, uh, they're, they're going to rely on somebody to make a big play, and he happens to be a guy they go to a lot. Yeah, and what, what just jumps out at you? Uh, he's, he's a very good receiver. I mean, he's, he's athletic. He can go up and uh, jump over you. He can run around you. Um, he can stop and start on a dime, and uh, he's a, a tremendous receiver that uh, we're going to have to pay special attention to and make sure that he can't make all the big plays he's been making. Is, he the, is Michigan State the best offense you will have faced? Uh, probably, yeah. I mean, we, we've, in my opinion, we faced some decent offenses, different style of offenses, teams that can run, teams that can pass. This is probably the most balanced football uh, offense that we're going to see. Uh, you got a quarterback. You, they can run the ball with a good offensive line. They've got good receivers. You Chris, so superior been... athletically to most of the teams you played, and now you're playing that, that's your opinion, but so, I mean, <laughs> go ahead. I um, people, yeah. I mean, now you're playing a team that, that obviously is comparable to you. Uh, mm -hmm. How much concern is there, if there is concern, that okay, are we are we ready for this challenge? Are we, have we been prepared for this challenge? Yeah, there's no no issues about us being prepared for this challenge. This program is set up for. Uh, training our players for moments like this. So there's no concern about whether we're going to be ready or not. This team will be ready. Uh, is the margin for error a lot smaller when you you face another talented team? Uh, absolutely. You can't make some of the mistakes that you can against other teams and expect to get away with them and, and uh, come out on the, the winning side of the, the game. But uh, our players will be ready, and they've been trained for moments like this. Chris, how much of an effort do you put into seeing if Connor Cook is healthy? I mean, because it just seems very antithetical to the nature of a coach to want to guess on something like that. Yeah, I, we're not wasting a lot of time. Um, he's going to be there. We know that. that. That's not really a concern of ours. Uh, if he's not, you know, we'll move on and, and uh, we'll have a plan for whoever is in there. But uh, we're planning it as he will be there and we're not going to waste a lot of time uh, worrying about whether he's not. Because, I mean, when, when you guys faced Indiana, the guys afterwards said the wrinkle with Xander Demont coming in through them a little bit. Do you have uh, to well, the Yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that would be an accurate statement. We missed a tackle on him that, that went for a big play. Uh, the scheme that we had uh, employed for him and the call that we were in was great. We missed a tackle. Uh, if you're going to miss tackles, I don't care who's at quarterback, you're not going to have a chance for success. So, um, again, we'll be ready for who's ever there. Uh, Chris, what yep. about their running game? Uh, they, they've been kind of unsettled at running back, it seems like. And, LJ Scott's our leading rusher. But yeah. What are your thoughts on their rushing game? Uh, I, I think they're still a run first offense. Uh, they got a good offensive line. I know some of the players have been in and out, and they've kind of had a different lineup because of injuries. But I think it looks like they're starting to get the, their, their best players back, and they're going to have a um, you know, a good solid offensive line. And those those running backs are good players, and uh, they'll try to get the running game going against us. LJ Scott is he presented kind of special? Uh, yeah, he's a big back. I mean, we we were well aware of uh, LJ. Jay here when he was at high school. He's a big back with good feet, good speed. He can beat you around the edge. He can run through you. So uh, he's a load, and uh, uh, we're going to have to do a great job against him. Coach Connor Cook hasn't David. thrown a second half interception yet this season. Uh, he's a guy who takes care of the ball really well, it seems like, for Michigan State. Uh, the defense seems to be predicated on generating turnovers. How tough of a challenge would that be to kind of turn the ball over against a guy like that? Uh, every week it's, it's a challenge to try to create takeaways, I and mean, that's what we want to uh, try to do every week. And you know, I, I would assume, uh, you know, if he doesn't have any interception in the second half, uh, that's not something they probably have designed it to be that way. I'm sure they don't want to have any interceptions uh, throughout the whole course of the game, just like we want to get takeaways throughout the whole course of the game. And it's something we work on all the time. I mean, do you see him as exceptional in that regard? As someone uh, no, I mean, he's a very good player regardless of first half or second half. I mean, um, you know, uh, why did he make interceptions in the first half or throw some in the first half and not in the second half? I couldn't tell you, you know, to be honest with you, from all the film I've watched. But uh, it's probably not anything they want to have happen. Hey, Chris, with how 
keep Ohio question. is with high school talent. Um, obviously, you guys you just said you were aware of LJ when he was in high school and whatnot. How tough is it to play a team like Michigan State, uh, not from like an X's and O's standpoint, but to see so many familiar faces that either you guys didn't have room for in your class or, or you know got out of Ohio or in general because there's going to be a lot of people on that team that you guys once had relationships with. Yeah, well, I, you know, I've been in that situation before and on the other side of it where you know, been at a place where you take some players out of another state and you try to use that as motivation. You know, they didn't want you or, or whatever. And, um, you know, they've, they've been able to come into Ohio and they've taken some really good players that have ended up being great players for them and gone on to the NFL and whatever. But um, at the end of the day, it's not about, um, you know, Ohio players versus Ohio State. It's, you know, uh, us just going out and doing our job. But uh, do they sometimes maybe use that as extra motivation and uh, initially in the game have a little extra juice probably? Chris, I'm sorry, real quick. You, you've had Damon, back, Damon Webb back for a couple of weeks now. Two weeks, yes. How comfortable are you in that nickel package now? Uh, we're, we're a lot more comfortable today than we would have been, you know, two weeks ago when he played uh, against Minnesota. Uh, he's just about completely healthy, not 100% yet, but close. Uh, he's knocked some rust off that he had from uh, being out for a few weeks. So uh, we're pretty comfortable right now today.